where you're calling in from, let us know uh, what kind of industry you're looking for. And then uh, sometime today, jump out to Google, grab your LinkedIn URL and post that in here. So go ahead and start typing that in. Let us know where you're calling in from. Let us know what industry or job type you're looking for. And then we'd also love to see your LinkedIn URL. Okay, so I was on my walk this morning and I was listening to this book and um, it was so interesting. Uh, one of my favorite speaker or um, writers, her name is Beth Moore. And every time, or every time I listen to her, just something, she just gets me, gets to me. And she was saying, she was talking about people that are going through a tough time right now. And I was of course thinking about everybody on the line today and how I could be thinking about them and praying for them uh, and anyone who joins us. And so, uh, but she said something really interesting, you know, um, back in the, rece the, the re recession 11 years ago when I was laid off and looking for my next thing, um, just decided to help a couple people write resumes and it turned into so much more. We eventually turned into a nonprofit and that's what is here today. But she said, you know, when, when you're going through your tough time and you kind of come out of it and you look back on your back on like what you've gone through, she was like, would you choose to go through that? Um, because of maybe the people that you helped. And I thought, well, no, I don't ever want to go through that again. That was, um, probably I was in the pit lowest of lows. We lost our house. We had to, um, our rental then foreclosed on us because they weren't paying the mortgage. Um, we lost jobs. We weren't sure how we were going to just live. And it was a really, really hard time. But would I choose to go through that again? I don't know about that. But what I can say is that because of that, um, we've been able to serve over 40,000 people through this program. And so whatever you're going through today, your story is obviously going to be very different than my story. But um, we are here to help you get through maybe the hardest time of your life. Uh, so I don't, some of you may have been affected by that recession in 2008 and nine um, also. So you feel me on that. And some of you are feeling that today. And so if you are feeling that today in any way, shape or form, you are in the right place. We have resources, we have information to help you move forward. And we're just so, so thankful that you've chosen to join us today. All right, so great. I see the chat blowing up now. Thank you. Um, just. Go ahead and let us know if you're just joining, let us know where you're calling in from, your target industry, and um, drop your LinkedIn URL in there today. Feel free to engage in the chat today. Feel free to private message people. You have the option to message the whole group or to message people individually. Feel free to do that. Uh, make sure you're connecting with the LinkedIn URLs that are dropped. Connect with people. We're doing our best to create this networking environment and um, in a virtual format, since we can't be face to face right now. All right, Sheila, I'm going to drop it over to you um, to talk through some of the other tech stuff. Okay, good morning. Hi, it's Sheila Colum. I'm happy to be here with you. And like Jessica said, let's use the chat because that's how we can we can get to know each other and support one another. So that's what we want to do. Uh, Facebook is a little bit slow this morning, so the live stream will start in just a minute. Um, toward the end of our event, we're going to ask you a couple of poll questions, just what your experience was like. And if you just answer those, the, the screen will go away so you can see the slides again. If you have any questions, go ahead and use the chat. You do have some options depending on what device you're viewing us from, um, how many of the video screens you see and where they are on your screen. Um, where the, wherever my face is appearing right now, above it should be a little toolbar and you can play with how many of us you see or how big it is or where it is. So so just keep that in mind as you see slides, it might be helpful. Um, one other thing I wanted to just mention today, oh, besides closed captioning, if anybody does need closed captioning, just private message me or text our phone number and we'll get that going for you. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention, I'm kind of excited, we are going to pilot a different kind of an event. Uh, we're going to try it out with just a small group of people so that it, if you're registered for this event or if you registered for an event recently with us, you'll get an invitation. This is not gonna be a publicized event, but we're gonna try out a, a coaching event. For those of you who used to come to our events in person, that last hour we got to spend um, in like a resource time where we had a table for a career coach and LinkedIn coaches and resume writers and our photographer. Um, oh, that's another thing, the photographer, if you haven't noticed in our weekly email, 
we have mentioned there is a photographer in town who has generously offered to do free headshots for you. So if you're in need of a headshot, check out our Monday newsletter. And there's a link in there for someone who has a couple of sessions scheduled throughout the Valley. And um, I'm, I'll put in the chat later when his next session is, because I, I forgot to look that up right now, but I will, his name is uh, Gordon and he's super nice. And it's called Name Your Rate Headshot. So he's asking if you, ha if you can help him out, but if not, he's happy to take them for free like we did our, at our events. Okay, so that's headshots. So the other thing we used to do is coaching and we're gonna pilot an event next week. If you've registered here, you'll get an invite for it. Just to let you know, watch for it, it'll be, um, Tuesday, October 13th at two o'clock is when it's going to be. And the, the invitation will be in your email and it'll be a different registration than what you do for us normally. You're gonna have to register on Zoom to join. Um, we're, just, we're doing different security measures because it's gonna be an open session where everyone's speaking. So watch for that. Thanks. Great, thank you, Sheila. Um, I have a couple people already commenting about Gordon. So it looks like we have the right guy to help us during this time. So awesome. Sheila, thanks for working with him. Okay, so today you're going to hear from Kevin Duncombe on Kickstart Your Job Search. Then we have Windsor, LifeWell, and T-Tech as our hiring companies today. And then we'll close it out with some resources. Uh, Joe, and from US Health Advisors, and then we have some additional resources we are going to go over with you guys. All right, so I'm super excited to introduce our great friend who has been a supporter of Career Connectors since like the beginning. <laughs> and so Kevin Dumcom, uh, AZED Pro, is the Business Services Team Supervisor for Arizona at Work, Maricopa County. And prior to his current position, he served two years as employment specialist and community outreach coordinator for Central Arizona Shelter Services, assisting job seeking clients residing in the shelter to connect with the workforce. In addition to his stints in employment services and property management for HUD Section 8 housing, Kevin enjoyed a long career as a market research accountant, exec, account executive and analyst. Kevin is, proud, is a proud graduate of the University of Minnesota. He wrote this. I'm going to say it. It's breaking my heart. Go Gophers. <laughs> and he looks forward to the day in his lifetime when he can cheer for his team in the Rose Bowl as Big Ten champions. Kevin enjoys networking and is very active on social media. And in his spare time, Kevin enjoys geek culture, reading 1930s pulp fiction, watching really bad movies, attending to his extensive comic book collection, and his, he is an avid Elvis Presley fan. You can reach him on LinkedIn or on Twitter, um, and he is always accessible. He is um, also serves on our Career Connectors Board of Directors, and I am honored to have him here today. Please help me welcome Kevin Duncombe. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica, and go Gophers. Uh, so <laughs> good morning, everybody. Uh, this is a little bit weird because I have given this presentation before, but it's always been in a room full of people where I can see you. Uh, now uh, it's online, it's on computer, I see the chat, uh, but I don't see your faces. So it does feel a little bit weird that I'm just talking to a computer, uh, but hopefully some of the information uh, that I can share uh, will be helpful for you. Uh, normally I would start with just a couple of questions, but since I can't see you, I'm gonna to have to make a couple of assumptions. The first assumption, and I'm seeing some of the chat already, uh, is that we do have uh, visitors today from across the country, although I do imagine that the majority of uh, you watching right now are from the Phoenix area. Uh, a lot of what I will be sharing uh, does have universal application. Uh, some of what I will be sharing will be very specific to the Phoenix market, but if you are uh, calling in from outside of Phoenix, then you should be able to find uh, an equivalent service, an equivalent agency somewhere in your market. The second assumption that I'm going to make is that I know some of you are watching today because you are looking for a new job, a different job. Uh, maybe you are underemployed and you are looking for something better, however you define better. Uh, I'm also going to assume, though, that many of you are here because you are between jobs. Uh, that you were let go, you were downsized, you were laid off, you were furloughed, uh, for whatever reason that might have been. And I want to let you know that uh, you're not alone. And my screen is not advancing. Sheila told me this might happen, but... Yeah, try the 
bottom left, just um, use your mouse and let it kind of hover over. Sheila, are you on? Hmm. Let me see. I will try to advance. Let me try this. Let me try this. I had advanced you one, but try again. There you go. All right, so there I am. So thank you. So if you are between jobs, if you have been laid off, I want you to know that uh, your feelings and your emotions are absolutely valid. Uh, experts have shown, experts have seen that now, losing a job is as traumatic an experience for somebody as losing a loved one. Now, because for many of us, our identities are tied up into our occupations. So when you are told through no fault of your own that uh, the company is closing, the company is downsizing, the company no longer needs you, that is hard to hear and that is hard to accept. And then add into that, uh, all of everything that's happening in the world in 2020 right now. So we have the fires in Arizona and California, some of which uh, have caused lives and have uh, caused evacuations and have burned homes. Uh, we have the storms in the Southeast uh, with another one seeming to come and they seem to be coming one after another. Now uh, we have the social justice unrest and the marches and the protests and some of them have turned violent. Uh, we're in the middle of a, an election season, which is highly contentious and whatever side you're on, you're feeling that. Uh, and on top of everything, we're in the middle of a global pandemic that we haven't seen in our lifetimes. So there's a lot going on and any one of those would have been enough for any given year, but add all of those together and then you throw in a job loss, your feelings are valid. So your feelings of anger, your feelings of sadness, of despair, uh, of wondering how are you gonna get through this, all of those feelings are absolutely valid and I want you to know that, that we feel that, we feel that for you. But I do, I can't do anything about many of the things I just mentioned, but I can help you get through the job search process. So you need to know how companies think. And companies, unfortunately, do not exist for the purpose of providing employment. Companies exist to make a profit for their shareholders, whether it's a single owner or whether it's a group of a publicly traded company, uh, they have to make a profit in order to stay open. And if they get to the point where they cannot make a profit, they have to make some decisions. And sometimes that decision is they need to close down. Sometimes that decision is they need to let go staff. And as painful as that is, a company will do whatever it needs to do in order to continue to make a profit because otherwise it cannot continue to perform. Now, many companies will talk about and will share uh, how much they value their, their employees, how much they value their staff, and many companies actually believe that and they actually walk the talk. Uh, but uh, we're in a situation that we've never seen in our lifetimes right now and it's forcing some very, very difficult decisions throughout the entire market and companies are having to make these difficult decisions. Uh, companies can no longer, and if they ever did, uh, able to provide job security for you. So you have to take control of your own career path. You have to be responsible for that. So that means adding skills to what you currently have. Every time you have an opportunity to add new skills through coursework, classes, training, take advantage of that. But also, you have to give yourself permission that when you find that next great opportunity, you have to give yourself permission to go for it. Uh, and however you define better, it could be better pay, it could be better hours, it could be uh, better benefits, uh, it could be a better location. Uh, but however you define better for yourself, when you find that better opportunity, you have to give yourself permission to go for it. You have to control your own career because companies really never could provide that for you. And that has become painfully obvious over the last 10 to 15 years, uh, first with the recession and now with the, now the downturn due to the pandemic, you have to put yourself in a situation where you can survive this uh, because I will promise you that your next job will probably not be your last job. You will probably have another job after that. You have to put yourself in a position to take advantage of that. But in the meantime, how do you do this job search? 
so experts say that to find a full-time job, you have to put in a full-time effort, and, and that is still true. Uh, but you can't do it 24-7. You will burn yourself out and you will get extremely frustrated. So you have to take care of yourself, and especially now uh, when everyone is working from home, uh, your children are, are uh, distance learning uh, or they're in a hybrid situation, uh, you haven't seen your loved ones, you haven't been able to hug your, your, uh, your relatives because of how dangerous it is, et cetera, et cetera, all sorts of things, you have to find ways that you can take care of yourself. Uh, so talk to your pastor, your rabbi, whoever your leader of faith is, uh, talk to a friend, a, a family member, and share your feelings. Uh, read poetry, uh, garden, uh, start exercising or exercise more. Uh, do whatever you need to do in order to put yourself in a good frame of mind. You have to take care of yourself, get your rest, get your exercise, eat well, uh, because this is going to be a, a slog. This is going to be a little bit of an effort for you to get through this, uh, and you need to put yourself in the best you know, position possible so that you can take advantage of that. All right, so now let's talk about job search. When we talk about job search, whether you realize it or not, I'm going to tell you that you have been given a gift. You have been given an opportunity to reevaluate what it is that you're doing and what it is that you want to do. And are you doing what it is that you were put on this earth to do? And maybe for some of you, and maybe for a lot of you, the answer is yes. So what you were doing before is exactly what you were put on this earth to do, and you want to keep doing it. And if that's the case, more power to you. Absolutely, let's go for it. But maybe you're in a situation like I was not when we went through the Great Recession, when I was laid off, and I did have a very long career in market research. Uh, I was an analyst. I was an account executive. There was a lot about my occupation or my career that I really, really liked. Uh, but when I went through the, the downturn, first of all, nobody was hiring for market research in 2009, and I know because I asked everybody. So I had to start thinking, what is it that uh, I can do with my skills and with my experience? And through that exercise, I realized that I wasn't doing what I was put on this earth to do, that there was more that I should be doing, uh, and I was able to align my skills and my experience uh, into a new career, the career that I'm enjoying right now. So how did I do that? I'm going to share some of that right now. The first thing I'm going to share is uh, the book, What Color Is Your Parachute? And some of you may be familiar with this. Some of you, this may be brand new to you. Uh, it is called the, the Job Seekers Bible. And I will say that other than the Holy Bible, this is probably the book that has been most influential in my life. Uh, White Colors Your Parish was written by Richard Bowles in 1974, and he rewrote it every year since then, uh, up until he passed away in 2017. Uh, the part that he uh, mainly rewrote is the first third of the book which primarily talks about the labor market statistics and also how that the way that job seekers look for employment is absolutely the inverse of the way that employers look for job seekers. So you need to flip that paradigm. So that's the first third of the book. The second third of the book is a lot of self-discovered exercises that you can do that will help you identify what are your interests, what are your skills, what do you like to do, where do you like to do them, so that when you're done with this exercise, you will have a visual picture of what it is exactly that you want to do. Now, Richard Bowles was a very visual person, so his exercises was to draw it out on pieces of paper and then tape all the pieces together. Now, he called it the flower diagram. So at the end, you would literally have a flower, uh, multi-pages taped together that would give you a very visual representation of what it is that you would put on this earth to do. Now, a lot of the exercises have gone online. Uh, but it's still worth your time to go through them. The third third of the book is, okay, now that you know what it is that you want to do, go out and find it. And spoiler alert, it involves networking. And I'm going to come back and talk about networking a little bit later on. I will say that if you can find any recent version, uh, you will be very, it, it, 
you'll, you'll do very well because the part that normally changes would be the first third, which is the labor market information, and there are other sources where you can find that. Uh, the second part and the third part have been fairly stable for quite a while, and that's the part that I really want you to pay attention to. So what is it that you want to do? Figure it out uh, and then figure out how you can find that. But there are other tools that you can take to figure out uh, how you're wired and what you are meant to do. So as part of the Career Connectors audience today, uh, you are eligible to take the DISC assessment. Normally there would be a fee for taking this, uh, but uh, there is a, a, an option for Career Connectors members, and you are now members because you're watching this video right now, to take the DISC assessment. Uh, and it will help you identify uh, your interests, your skills, and where they align. One of the tools that I use is a book called Strength Finder, and you no longer have to buy the book. You can go straight to the website at strengthfinder.com, uh, uh, but this helps you identify what are your top strengths, not your skills. Skills are learned and skills can change, but what are your innate strengths? And the idea is that if you play to your strengths, you're more likely to find success. Now, if you try to play against your strengths, then you're more likely to find frustration. So identify what your strengths are and align your choices relative to your strengths. The book has all of the strengths and the, the properties of each of the strengths, but if you take the assessment, then it will give you your score and then it will tell you what it means. And you don't actually need the book because a lot of the book then would not be very applicable to you. Uh, now the test is about $15 the last time that I looked at it, uh, but it is worth your money if you have the, the funds to understand what are your strengths and how can you align them uh, to occupation choices, training choices, et cetera. And then of course there's the Myers-Briggs, uh, the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Now properly done, uh, Myers-Briggs is a proctored assessment, uh, properly done. There would be a fee for taking the Myers-Briggs assessment. Uh, so I will not tell you that if you do a Google search for Myers-Briggs, the first several options that you will find will be Myers-Briggs simulators. I will not tell you that because that would be inappropriate. Uh, but uh, if you take the Myers-Briggs and you get your four-digit score, your four-letter score, uh, it will tell you what your personality type is. And then you can do research and understand with this personality type, what are some of the common uh, occupations and common career paths that tend to align with this occupation. Now, there is a little bit of a grain of salt for this because every time that I take this, uh, I come up with an INFJ and it tells me that one of the top uh, occupations for an INFJ is a uh, dental hygienist. And I have zero interest in becoming a dental hygienist, so you still have to put the sniff test to whatever these scores are telling you. But if you take enough of these tests and enough of these assessments, you should start to get a really clear picture of who you are, how you're wired, what your interests are, and what your strengths are and where you want to align them for a career and an occupation. And one of the things that I counsel uh, my clients uh, a lot is you are going to be working a very long time. A lot of your life is gonna be spent working. You might as well be doing something that you enjoy. So you have to figure out what that would be. Now I'm in workforce development and one of the tools that we use a lot in workforce development is onetonline.org. It's a free option that was put out by the Bureau of Labor Statistics and there's a couple of things in here that I want to point you to. So first of all, there's a lot of information on onetonline.org and I uh, recommend that you spend a lot of time uh, searching uh, the different functions. But the two that I want to point out for today uh, is the, uh, the one that I circled, I want to be A or my next move. So a lot of what I just talked about, about how to align your interests and your skills and your, your strengths to occupations, uh, if you go to my next move, it's about a 15 minute uh, assessment and it'll just cut to the chase and it'll make recommendations to you based on your interests. The key to my next move is don't spend a lot of time uh, considering. So it's, it's a trade off. Would you rather do A or B? Would you rather do A or B? Would you rather do A or B? Don't spend a lot of time. Don't try to figure out the nuance. Just answer it straight up. Uh, and then at the end, uh, about 15 minutes, it will tell you what your strengths are again and, and suggest direct occupations that align with those strengths. 
The other thing that you can do is at the very top of the page, then I have a circle, the occupational quick search. Uh, just type in the occupation that you're interested in exploring. So maybe it was the one that you just left. Uh, maybe it's one that you are considering moving into. Now you type it in and it'll open up a page that has a wealth of information about what are the typical qualifications, the typical work the environment, the typical knowledge, skills, and abilities for that occupation but it will also tell you other related occupations. And that's one of the strengths of this. So you can take, you scroll down to the bottom and maybe you're reading through this occupation thing. Well, that's kind of it. It's not quite what I'm looking for. What are the other recommended occupations that, that align with these skills? Then at the very bottom, very, very helpful. It tells you for your local area, uh, what are the, the, the employment outlook for the next six to eight years? And ideally, you would be looking for an occupation that is growing. If you find an occupation that is contracting or shrinking, that doesn't mean that there won't be openings, but it does mean that it'll be extremely competitive. And if it's an occupation that you're trying to move into, uh, it's going to be very, very competitive for you to move into that occupation. So you want to make an informed decision about what occupation that you're moving into. It will also give you uh, a, a income scale. Now, now the income scale is uh, at best about 18 months old. That's about how long it takes to compile the data and, and report it. Uh, but it gives you a range so that you can see, does this occupation meet my financial needs for myself and my family? And if you're pursuing an occupation that's not going to meet your financial needs, well, then you have some decisions to make. Now, is it worthwhile to continue pursuing this occupation for other reasons? or do you need to meet your financial obligations so you need to find something else? So you make informed decisions about where you wanna go. So now you know what your strengths are, you know what occupations you may be searching for, now you need to find companies. And in the Phoenix area, I am going to recommend that you start with the Phoenix Business Journal Book of Lists. If you were in another market, there is probably a book of lists for your particular market, uh, but the book of lists uh, is literally a book of lists of companies. Now it doesn't tell you anything about the companies other than this is what the company is uh, and it's sorted based on number of employees, it's sorted based on uh, total income for the company or total clients or, or uh, whatever the, the main uh, parameters are. Uh, so it doesn't give you any qualitative information about the company, but it's a great way for you to get a list of the top 25 or 50 companies in a market based on whatever that scale is. Uh, so I highly recommend that you start there and then start doing your research. You can cross-reference the book of lists with a, companies such as Best Companies AZ. Uh, so Best Companies AZ uh, evaluates companies uh, based on uh, employee satisfaction scores, and then it just ranks them. Uh, and it does this year after year, and it compiles a lot of data, and then it compiles a profile of the top companies. So if you are interested in a company and you find them on Best Companies AZ, and then you can read the profile and you can have a very good understanding of what that company means. Now, if you are interested in a company and you don't find them on Best Companies AZ, that does not mean that it's not a good company. It simply means that it hasn't risen to the top uh, X percent that Best Companies AZ will report on their website. Uh, but I would check it out and see if they're on there because if they are, it will give you a lot of information about that company. And then, of course, just Google. Uh, type the company name into Google and, and see what it is. Uh, I always try to go to the, you know, at least to the second page because the first page, uh, you know, the, the Yelp reviews and all that sort of stuff, and you see they're going to be five stars or one star and you kind of have to wait through all that. Now, I try to go to the second page where I look at the news articles for that company to see why that company was in the news or if it has been in the news. And, and what has been talked about it. So you wanna be well informed about the companies that you are chasing after before you start chasing after them. Okay, so now you know what your strengths are, you know what occupations you're targeting, you have an idea of what companies you may be interested in, now you need to get help. So another assumption that I'm going to make, uh, because I talk to job seekers all day, every day, is that for many of you, this may be the first job search that you've had to do in five years, 10 years, maybe ever. Maybe you've never had to actually look for jobs, they just came to you. 
Uh, I have to tell you that looking for jobs in 2020 is very different than it was in 2015, very different than it was in 2008, very different than it was in 1995 or whenever the last time you had to look. And nobody knows how to look for jobs because it's not your job. Your job isn't to look for jobs. Your job is to do the job. So when you have to look for jobs, you're, you're wondering, okay, how do I get started? And a lot of people get started and they make mistakes, they have to backtrack, get some help. Uh, because that's what we do. Uh, we in workforce development, we work with job seekers to help you, to help you find what it is that you're looking for. And I have to start with my own company, Arizona at Work. So I do work for Arizona at Work. Uh, they do pay me to say nice things about Arizona at Work, but I will say that I chose to join Arizona at Work because I do believe in our services. I do believe in uh, the work that we do. Uh, and when I come to work every day, I am absolutely energized and jazzed at the, uh, the passion and the quality of the people that I get to work with every day. But Arizona at Work, we are the public workforce development program for the state of Arizona. Uh, my office covers Maricopa County. Uh, we have offices in the city of Phoenix and there's offices throughout the state. If you are outside of Arizona, there will be an office similar to Arizona at Work. Of course, it won't be called Arizona at Work. It will be called something different. Uh, you'll have to do a Google search and find out what that is. Uh, but we exist to help you with your career search. So we can help you put together a resume. Uh, we can help you get prepared for interviews. Uh, we can help you with a lot of the career exploration that I talked about. If you need some guidance and uh, someone just to bounce ideas off, we can help you with that. Uh, we can help you with your LinkedIn profile. Uh, and we can help connect you with employers who are searching for you. Uh, that's my role and my team. And I see that some of my teammates uh, have uh, joined the call today. They're all here uh, and we exist to meet with employers to find out what employers are looking for so we can bring that back and share that with the job seekers that we meet with and make those connections. So like everybody, we are social distancing right now, uh, but we have stayed open throughout the entire pandemic period. Uh, we do recommend that you search us out online uh, and allow us to connect with you online before we have you come in just because of that social distancing. Uh, if you want to connect with us, now go to maricopa.gov slash find a job, fill out a job seeker inquiry form, and then someone will get back to you and start that process for you. Now, I do work for Arizona at Work, but we are not the only game in town. Uh, I could spend an entire presentation talking about all of our workforce development partners. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to call out one in particular, uh, Goodwill of Central in Northern Arizona. Uh, now, I also have to confess that I used to work for Goodwill of Central in Northern Arizona a number of years ago. That's how I started my career in workforce development. Uh, but they do a fantastic job and they have also stayed open during the pandemic and they have career centers throughout uh, the Phoenix region and throughout the Northern Arizona region. Uh, they also have gone to an online delivery of services and you can connect with a career advisor by going to mycareeradvisor.com and filling out the form and getting connected with them. But my point is get the help. Uh, talk to someone and let them help you with your resume, with interview prep and all the other things that you need to do to be successful. Don't neglect your public library system. Uh, when I went through my own uh, downsizing in 2009, uh, I spent a fantastic afternoon, one of my most productive days uh, at the Phoenix Public Library, the Burton Bar Library, talking to the, uh, one of the reference librarians. So your public library does have resources uh, that even we don't have in workforce development uh, because some of these are very expensive and we're very happy to let them carry the bill instead of us. Uh, but they are available to you for the price of a library card, which is free. So get your library card, check out the, your local library system. All of these, the Phoenix Public Library, the Scottsdale Public Library System, the Maricopa County Library District, uh, they all have workforce development sections on their website that will help direct you to the, the proper source where you need to go. All right, so now, You've got the health that you need. Now you need to find the jobs. Where are the jobs? And yes, we are in an economic downturn. And yes, we have lost hundreds of thousands of positions since March. 
and yes, that's unfortunate. However, there are lots and lots of companies right now, uh, particularly in the Phoenix region, which is where I represent, that are hiring and that are really struggling right now to find enough qualified candidates to fill their positions. Uh, so this is a screenshot that I took a week ago uh, when I prepared this presentation deck. There were 65,000 open, open postings on the azjobconnection.gov website. So you as a job seeker can uh, put your profile on azjobconnection.gov uh, and start looking for jobs. So it's just like another job board, but if you post your resume on azjobconnection.gov, then you have me and people like me who are looking for those resumes to match them with the employers that we are working with. Uh, now the 65,000, those are postings, and many of those postings have multiple open positions. So you probably can reliably double that number and there's probably reliably at least 130,000 open positions in Maricopa County today that we are looking to fill and that number changes every single day. And as we continue to open, reopen and bring people back, that number is going to continue to grow. Uh, you also notice that right now there's only 12,000 resumes, so that's a pretty good odds. If you get your resume in, uh, that's about you know five employers for every resume that we have in azjobconnection.gov right now. There are the job boards and there's nothing wrong with the job boards. Uh, I recommend that you do use the job boards. You probably are going to want to uh, prepare a profile on the job boards, but just be aware that when you do, uh, that is where you will start to get the spam emails, you get the, uh, the, the, the envelope stuffing and, and the uh, commission only uh, insurance sales and that type of thing. Now, if that's what you're looking for, then, then there you go. But uh, we do get a lot of spam when we create profiles on the job boards. Uh, however, you may need to go to the job boards because that's where employers are also posting their positions. My recommendation is if you go to a job board and you find an, a, a position that you're particularly interested in, jot it down, close the job board, go to that company's website, open up their website, and go to their careers page and apply with the company directly. And that will help control the amount of spam that you get from any particular board that you create a profile for. Now, I am a big believer in LinkedIn, and, and I do highly, highly, highly recommend that you optimize your LinkedIn profile and then use that to start looking for jobs. So you can see that there's a jobs link on LinkedIn that will help, that, that will identify jobs that align with the skills that you entered on your profile. You can also use it as a job board and you can search directly for positions that you're interested in. And a couple of really cool things about LinkedIn is that number one, it will tell you how closely the skills on your profile match with the skills requirements of the job posting. So you can tell uh, whether you're on the mark, whether you're missing the mark, whether you need to maybe even update your profile because you've left off some skills. Now, the other thing is often the recruiter who posted the position will have their uh, link on the, pro the, the posting and you can connect with the recruiter. So even if this position doesn't quite work out, now you're linked with a recruiter for something that's like the position that you're interested in so that you will be notified the next time the open position comes up. So as Jessica mentioned at the beginning of the presentation today, uh, put your, your LinkedIn profile in the, the chat, uh, connect with everybody, connect with the recruiters who are here today. And I'm speaking for the recruiters, uh, but they will connect with you because this is their job. Their job is to find qualified people and they need to build their book of, of candidates. So yes, reach out to everybody, connect with everybody, grow your profile, uh, but work on your profile and make sure that it is optimized. You also can use other social media to your benefit. And what I'm going to recommend is that, yes, follow the companies on social media that you're particularly interested in. Uh, but two things. Number one, uh, I, I do have the disclaimer here, limit your time spent on online networking. Uh, I mentioned earlier that job search, full-time job search is a full-time job. So don't spend four hours scrolling through Twitter and then call that four hours of networking. That's really not a good use of your time. What is a good use of your time is following the companies that you're interested in and seeing what they post. Uh, and not even necessarily replying to those posts, but at least seeing what they post and get a sense of their culture and get a sense of what they're looking for. And then many times they will, the companies will also post uh, the open positions that they're looking to fill. The other thing I will say though about social media is be very careful about what you are posting. 
uh, because companies do look at your posts. And even if you think that your posts are private and that nobody can get into it, now all it takes is for somebody to favorite or share or retweet or whatever, and then your post is out for the world to see. And particularly uh, now, because we are in a very contentious election period, if you're posting things like uh, anybody who doesn't agree with me is an income poop uh, or language to that effect, then somebody is going to not agree with you and you have just cut your odds in half of finding the position that you're looking for because somebody is going to be offended by the position that you take. Hiring events. I, I'm a big believer of hiring events and we put on hiring events all the time. Now, of course, as we are in uh, the, the period of COVID, a lot of our hiring events have moved from in-person to online. Uh, so uh, there are various types of online hiring events that we are trying to uh, experiment with. Uh, I do have some of the major players in the Phoenix region who post uh, or host hiring events. Uh, now, I know that local work and job advertising and even to some extent career connectors is really kind of cut back on the number of hiring events that they, they host uh, just because of the time that we're in. Uh, but I know that uh, we, Arizona at Work, and I know that Goodwill and I know a few others are continuing to have hiring events. And just this week, and it's only Wednesday morning, I've had five conversations this week about potential hiring events uh, between now and Thanksgiving. So one thing that you can do to, to keep yourself aware of the hiring events in the Phoenix region is to sign up for our Job Blast newsletter. Uh, and the information I believe is going into the chat uh, It's a free service. Uh, we put it out twice a week and it has information about the companies that we are working with the open positions that we can find, the hiring events that we are aware of, whether it's our event or somebody else's. And at least once a week, we put out a list of the 5,000 most recent job postings that we can find on the internet in a downloadable spreadsheet with the URLs that will take you directly to the posting. Uh, so you can do a sort, you can do a scroll, and you can go directly to the, the, the posting, uh, read it, and hopefully apply, and then hopefully get invited for an interview. And then there's a thing called the hidden job market. So the hidden job market refers to those positions that are open that are never posted. And there are a number of, uh, a range of how big the hidden job market actually is. I've seen estimates anywhere from 30% of all open positions up to 70% of all open positions are never posted. Uh, personally, I think the 70% is probably way too high. I don't think it's, it's quite that high, uh, but I think we can split the difference. And I think about 50% of the job openings are never posted. And they're not posted, not because of any nefarious reason, but it's because uh, somebody quit yesterday and uh, the boss hasn't gotten around to posting it yet. Uh, but the position is open. And if you network your way into that the opportunity, they never have to post it. They can just fill it because you are the right person at the right time. And I just gave away the secret. It does involve networking. You have to network. You have to network. So what networking means is telling everybody that you know exactly what it is that you're looking for so that they can tell the people that they know what it is that you are looking for and then connect back to you so that you can get connected with those opportunities. And if on social media, uh, if you are to put on your social media that I am currently exploring new opportunities, I am looking for, be very, very specific with what it is that you're looking for. And that is the key. You have to be very specific. So all of the things that I talked about at the beginning, now you have to apply that. If you just put out, hey, I'm, I'm unemployed, I'm looking for a job, no one really knows how to help you. But if you say, hey, I am looking for this, Ideally, in this part of the valley, whatever that would be, now people can hang their hat on that. And now people can make direct recommendations to you about who they know that may be hiring for that. And the, the weird thing is that if you say, I am looking for A in this part of the valley, then somebody is going to reply and say, well, I don't know anybody in that part of the valley, but I know somebody in the neighborhood next door. Would you be interested in that? And of course, your answer is yes, I would be interested, so let me know about that. So that's how networking can work, is you let people know what you're looking for so that they can help you find it. 
Now the key to networking is that it is reciprocal. So if someone tells you what they're looking for, and maybe it's not exactly what you're looking for, but you just talked to somebody yesterday, make that connection and keep it moving forward. So how do you find networking opportunities? Well, first of all, you're in one. Career Connector is probably the best uh, employment networking opportunity, at least in the Valley. So I applied Jessica and like she said, I don't think I was at the first meeting. I think I was at the second meeting, uh, but it absolutely blew me away because it absolutely made sense. And this is the way that you find your next opportunity is by telling people what you're looking for and letting them help you find it. Uh, Best Companies AZ also has hiring or networking opportunities. Uh, in Phoenix, we have a wonderful organization called networkingphoenix.com and it's a website and it's a list of networking opportunities in the Phoenix region. Now, I was on it the other day, and yes, it's a little bit less now than it has been in its heyday uh, because of COVID and because uh, things aren't happening to the volume that they used to happen. And a lot of things are moving online. But take advantage of them. Uh, go to networkingphoenix.com, look for something that you may be interested in. Some of them will require a fee. However, there have been cases where if you are a job seeker and if you are in that industry, if you were to call the organizer and let them know that you are between, between occupations, between jobs, uh, that you're interested in networking, they may let you in uh, at least once for no cost. Uh, to take advantage of that, or they may ask you to volunteer at that event. Uh, my advice is, yes, I will volunteer at that event, and if they give you an option, volunteer at the registration table, because then you see literally everybody who walks into the room uh, or who checks into that event. Don't overlook the social networking opportunities, and for that, we have the Facebook event, uh, and we have events on Eventbrite, and, and there are other sources. Now, they do have professional networking events on Facebook and on Eventbrite. They also have social networking opportunities on Facebook and Eventbrite. My advice to you is, what is it that you like to do, right? So if you are a movie buff, find a movie group on Eventbrite. Maybe there's a, uh, a shared movie night uh, that somebody is hosting over Netflix. Uh, register, go to that event and take part of the chat. Now, when you go to that chat, you're not going to go to a Netflix movie Eventbrite event and type into the chat, hey, I'm unemployed, I'm looking for work. You're not going to do that, so that's not going to get you anywhere. You're going to participate in that event the way that everybody else is participating. You're going to talk about the movie, you're going to talk about the actors and the director, et cetera, et cetera. Hopefully, at some point, you start to meet, even if it's virtually, some of the other people who are in that chat. Uh, and then at some point, somebody's going to say, hey, Kevin, it's nice to meet you. So what is, it, what is it that you do? Well, now they just invited you to give them your elevator pitch of what it is that you're looking for and how they can help you. That's the power of these events. And don't overlook volunteer opportunities. And these are all very specific to Phoenix. Uh, but there will be services that also uh, align with whatever market you're looking at today, but don't overlook volunteer opportunities. So Jessica has shared a, briefly my bio. Uh, before I was here, I worked for two years at, uh, at a homeless shelter. And what always amazed me uh, working at the homeless shelter is that these are people who have lost their homes. Many of them lost their homes because they also lost their jobs, and that was my role was to try to help them find new employment. Even these individuals that you would think would be uh, at the lowest part of their lives, and for many of them it, it probably was, even they found time to volunteer because even they found that there are people who are even worse off that need a hand up. Everybody needs a hand up. And, and volunteering, first of all, is just good for the soul. It's just good to give back to the society that's given to you. It also can help fill gaps on your resume. So right now, if you are between jobs, uh, your next employer is going to ask you, so what did you do during this time of COVID? You can tell them, well, while I was looking for my next opportunity, I took this class and I volunteered here and I did this. It can give you skills that you didn't have before. Now, I am going to say uh, that I am pretty successful at my job right now. Uh, I learned how to do my job because I started volunteering to do it. And for the first year that I was doing it, I wasn't paid. I wasn't paid to do what I'm doing now. 
until somebody started to pay me and then I started to uh, find new opportunities that way. Volunteering gave me the skills that allowed me to move into the career and the occupation that I have today. And then volunteering is also just an excellent way for you to network. So you can network with the other people who are volunteering. Uh, you can network with the organizers of whatever agency that you're being placed with as a volunteer uh, because they're not going to pay you. Uh, the least they can do is listen to you when you give your elevator pitch and say, this is what I'm looking for. Do you know anybody that you would recommend that I talk to? And they will be happy to do that if you show up and you do a good job at your volunteer uh, stint. Now, I will say that, uh, again, in this time of COVID, uh, companies are being a little bit different than they used to be. They're not just bringing people, whole groups of people in to work in schools or to work in shelters or other things. A lot of the volunteer opportunities now are online, but there are still a lot of backroom type of things. Uh, clothing closets or water drives or whatever else uh, it may be. Uh, so there are still a lot of opportunities to volunteer and to help back to your community. Now, having said everything that I said, to put you into a situation of success, you are still going to run into frustration. You're going to put out your resume and no one's going to reply. You're going to interview for a position. It's going to seem to go well. And then the, the company is going to decide not to hire anybody or hire somebody else. Uh, you're going to face a lot of rejection. For this, I just have to fall back on uh, the, the great stage that I always consult, uh, Rocky Balboa that life isn't about how hard you hit. Life is about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That you can have anything that you want in life, but you have to take the hits. And right now in 2020, we're taking a lot of hits, but we can get through this. We can get through this because all you need is one person to say yes. And then you start building on that success. And then you get another person to say yes until you find that recruiter, that employer who says yes, we want you. So 10 steps that I myself have lived through, uh, through the Great Recession, uh, that have helped me, that I see every day when I come to work. Uh, hopefully this has helped you. This is my contact information. I am on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter. Uh, and I am also part of Arizona at Work. So if you're interested in any of our services, I'll say once more, uh, maricopa.gov slash find a job. And I thank you, uh, Jessica, for the opportunity to speak and share this. Thank you so much, Kevin. We have a group of questions I'd like to ask. Uh, we do, you have finished five minutes, just enough time to get some questions in. So awesome. Um, going back to what color is your parachute, um, one of the questions was, um, is it worth it to get, you know, a new book? Um, are the activities the same or are they different enough to warrant getting a new book? I would say you don't need the latest version. So if you are fortunate enough to find one at a used bookstore or even at the library that may be a couple years old, all of the exercises will be similar enough to the previous year. Uh, you know, year over year, some of them may move to a new website, you know, that may change a little bit, but the exercises themselves uh, have stayed fairly constant for at least the 30 years that I've been reading the book. Uh, so any recent version, I would say, would, would do you very well. Okay, awesome. Um, what about, um, this one is an opinion. Um, uh, what is your opinion on someone taking a job that they're not necessarily thrilled about? Do you think they should take that job or should they continue looking? Well, you know, that's going to be situational. And, and at that, I would have to throw it back to the individual. So what is your financial situation right now? You know, what are your obligations to yourself and your family? Are you able to make, you know, meet all of your obligations? Uh, do you have any other support? Uh, or will this job be a stepping stone to the job that you actually want? Uh, so maybe if you are re-careering in particular, you need to take a sideways step and maybe a step backwards in order to start building again. That may be a reason for you to take a job that you might be overqualified for uh, in order to start moving forward again. Uh, but everything is situational. I'm not going to say absolutely yes, take that job. Uh, I will say that uh, 
Well, I, I can't. I can't even promise that everyone will be as blessed as I have been to find the job that you're meant to do. I can't, I can't say that, honestly. Uh, I have been particularly blessed. I remember my father. Uh, it took him 35 years to finally find the job that really fit him. Uh, so, uh, but he stuck with it. And, and that's, my, that's my hope, that's my prayer for each of you, is that you find the, the job that's going to speak to you that you're really going to be able to blossom in. Sometimes it does mean taking a step backwards. Yeah, I agree. Um, I always think sometimes people often, you know, mix their, um, think about what's my passion and it has to match my work. And it's awesome when that can happen. Uh, but sometimes you work, you have to pay the bills, but then you can go volunteer. You can do other things to fulfill that passion in you. So I think, you know, um, it, there, it can mix. It's awesome when it does, but it doesn't always. And so we have to pay the bills. So um, good, thanks for that. Um, so specific to Arizona Job Connection, what level of jobs? Are they entry-level to exec? Are they primarily entry-level? What kind of jobs are Arizona Job Connection? It's everything in between, uh, everything in between. So whatever occupation that you're looking for, you'll probably find something on Arizona Job Connection. Now, one of the things uh, that I can say about Arizona Job Connection is that any business that receives a federal contract is required to post their positions on uh, Arizona Job Connection. So this would be all your defense contractors uh, and, and everybody else. So yes, we have everything from uh, you know, doctoral degree, engineering positions, uh, down to you know, the very basic entry level positions and everything in between. Awesome. And then the last one I had, um, and I actually responded to this one on my own, but um, job fairs. So are there any that are industry specific or that have some of the higher level jobs? I know some people have gone into some job fairs and they've been targeting like their high volume entry level job. Uh, again, the answer is all of the above. Uh, so right now uh, we are looking at uh, probably five different job fairs uh, that we are considering between now and the end of uh, November or, or Thanksgiving. Uh, two of them are industry specific. Uh, so, uh, and, and then the other three would be more regional and, and more open to a variety of businesses. So, uh, you, you know, pay attention to how it's advertised. You know, a lot of times the organizers, and that's one of the things that we always try to do is promote the businesses that are participating in this hiring event so that you can do your homework ahead of time. Go to that company's website, see what they're hiring for, and even go ahead and apply for the position if you find the one that you're interested in, and then go to the hiring event, meet the recruiter, and let them know that you have applied uh, so that they then will go back to their office and pull your, your application and, and see how you did. Uh, but the answer is all of the above. We have industry specific events. We also have general purpose events uh, that specifically is intended to bring a wide audience of, of job seekers. Awesome. All right, Kevin, thank you so much for your time today. You've been a wealth of information. Feel free to get a hold of Kevin on his LinkedIn. Um, there's his email and his contact information. We really appreciate you being here today. Thank it you. My pleasure. Thank you. Clap. <laughs> All right, we are going to move into our program into the section on hiring companies. And so first we'd like to introduce Charles Villafranca, and he is a leading change agent for the senior living market. He began his career in healthcare in 1994 and has had many positions in senior living, both in managerial and direction. And he's currently the licensed healthcare administrator and executive director for Windsor Healthcare and oversees a 200 bed nursing facility specializing in behavioral health in Phoenix. He is also a subject matter expert and legal consultant, and he truly understands the senior living market and works as a change agent to ensure the highest quality of care is available. Um, he's worked with many government agencies on policy changes for Arizona senior citizens and was appointed by Arizona Governor Doug Ducey to serve on the Arizona Board of Nursing Care Institution Administrators and Assisting Living Facility Managers, the State Board, and currently serves as the President of the Board. He earned his bachelor's uh, degree in healthcare administration. He has a master's in healthcare administration from the University of St. Francis, and he's currently completing his doctorate. Uh, Charles, welcome. He is a devoted husband to his beautiful wife, Vanessa, and proud father of two boys, Christian and Dom Dominic. We are so glad to hear, have you here today. 
Hey, thank you so very much, Jessica. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. That's a, that's a mouthful. Um, but I've been very blessed and, and I uh, you know, love to give back to the community. And that's part of what Windsor is all about, is giving back to the community. Uh, Windsor has uh, five locations uh, throughout Arizona. And so kind of some of the items that we, we have, I can go into uh, share with you if I can get this to advance. If you put your mouse, like um, move it to the right just a little bit, um, an arrow will pop up. Let's see if I can get the arrow to pop up for you. Sheila, are you on? Could you advance for him? There we go. There we go. Yeah, it wasn't popping up for me. So Windsor prides itself that we offer skilled nursing facilities throughout Arizona uh, and a multitude of areas. So we have Ridgecrest, which is up in North Phoenix, uh, 38th and Bell, where we offer behavioral health and dementia uh, care as well as the traditional long-term care and the short stay subacute care. We also have Maryland Gardens, which is located in Central Phoenix, um, near Maryland and Central Avenue. And they're a unique property in whereby they have the skilled side as well as the assisted living side. So they have two different components offered at that location. And then we have Palm Valley, uh, which is a large skilled nursing facility that offers some behavioral health out in um, the West Valley near Litchfield and McDowell. And Cannell Palms uh, is a behavioral health assisted living uh, that offers uh, specialized programs for the SMI or um, some um, cognition issues with dementia um, over at 35th and McDowell. So again, sort of in the West area. And then Austin House all the way out in Cottonwood is the traditional assisted living with some behavioral dementia components that they offer. So we really have a large gamut uh, that we offer services to and then that we're also hiring for. So again, we're located in five different areas here in Arizona, but we also have over 30 properties in California. And we've actually had some uh, from California due to the fires and other issues that have moved here to Arizona that were able to just move through the company in that direction. Some of the great benefits of Windsor is, is that we also offer uh, some training programs. Here you can see all of our facility locations. Would encourage anyone that's looking uh, to enter into the healthcare market or that's in the healthcare market right now, looking for a position. Um, again, we offer careers uh, to individuals, but you know these are our locations here locally in Arizona. Stop by, meet with one of our associates, uh, we do on-site interviewing, uh, immediate interviews, fill out the application, and let's see how we can help you. Some of the positions that we're currently offering and that we're hiring for, dietary workers, activities assistants, certified nursing assistants, licensed practical nurses, registered nurses, and social services assistants. That's just a small uh, clip it of some of the areas that we're looking for, but we really focused in on how did COVID impact our communities, not just within the Windsor brand, but the communities at large that we serve, right? So we looked at restaurant workers, we looked at servers, we looked at uh, people that were in the movie theater industry and things of that nature. With the market being shut down, we then started advancing out into those markets and saying, you know, if you were impacted by COVID and you didn't have the opportunity to be employed, well, Windsor is here and, and we're standing strong with our community partners and, and we're offering positions and we're willing to do on the job training with you. We offer for certified nursing assistance, if you've thought about being in the market for becoming a CNA, uh, well, Windsor can help you with that. We have contracts with uh, CNA programs in the Valley, whereby we will help pay for the CNA training all that's needed and required of the individual is to work for Windsor community. And so it's a give uh, and a win-win. We wanna give back to the community and we wanna have a win-win partnership with our communities. So we offer multitudes of, of different scholarships. Um, so if you're already a certified nursing assistant, you're wanting to advance forward, you're wanting to become a nurse, 
Well, guess what? We have a Nightingale Scholarship Program that we can offer to get uh, individuals in and get them hired, get them trained, and get them to where they want to be uh, and to give back to, to the communities at large. Again, it's all about what we can do for not only our residents and their families and our current staff, but what can we do for the communities that the buildings do stand to serve. Um, and so again, I would just encourage individuals, if you're in the market, if you're already a nurse, a LPN, and you're having a difficult time getting into the hospitals, we have subacute units that you know are now like the med surges uh, of the hospitals. Uh, and so we would encourage you to stop by, visit one of our locations, complete an application, get that on-site interview. We're hiring today and we will be hiring throughout uh, the year. So please stop by, do that application. We need you. And thank you again, Jessica, for having me speak on behalf of Windsor. It's always a pleasure to be with uh, you guys and, and present. Thanks. Awesome. Well, we're so glad you're here. Thank you for joining us today. All right. We are now going to move over to Wendy. Uh, she is with LifeWell. She's been a recruiter there for five years. And previously, previously, she has experience recruiting for the past 20 for many different positions. She loves recruiting and helping applicants find employment and hopes that her presentation today will show how LifeWell improves lives and encourages and hopefully encourages you to join their team. So please help me welcome Wendy Flynn. Hello. Thank you. I'm See, trying to advance. <laughs> our presentation is like not loving. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> you advanced. Yeah, it went away though, Sheila. Oh, here there it is. Go. Okay, who we are. Uh, LifeWell is a nonprofit integrated healthcare agency providing treatment, services, and support for low income individuals diagnosed with serious mental illness general mental health issues, and substance use disorders. Um, who, who we are, we offer residential, outpatient, physical health services, community living programs, which are client-centered to address a broad range of needs. LifeWorld's programs provide safe and supportive environments that foster recovery, healthy living, and personal growth for individuals as they build on existing strengths, focus on addressing deficiencies and learning new social and vocational skills. We operate numerous locations throughout the Phoenix and Mesa areas. We have four outpatient clinics such as Oak, Windsor, South Mountain, and Desert Cove. We have four residential sites such as Site 1, Site 2, 4A, and 4B. We have four service hubs which are called LifeWell Centers and that's Power University Borough which is located in our Desert Cove location and Mitchell, and we have numerous housing and apartment units. LifeWell provides behavioral and physical health interventions to assist individuals in achieving their personal goals by using a whole health integrated care and wellness approach. We have residential treatment, outpatient, individual and group counseling, case management, psychiatric and medication management, primary care physical health services, assertive community treatment, which is called ACT, and housing. Uh, what we offer to our employees who join us, uh, we offer competitive pay, excellent benefit offerings. Um, you choose a variety of um, benefits for medical. We have like 12 plans. We have vision, we have dental. Uh, we have competitive pay time off, 403B retirement plan, with immediate plan participation, a wellness program with incentive pay, employee assistant program, reimbursement of licensure fees, student loan repayment options for selected positions, internal career growth opportunities, learning and development opportunities, and various work schedules and shifts. These are the opportunities that you can apply online with us at lifewell.us slash careers. We have case managers that are available in our outpatient clinics. We have clinician ones that are available in our residential and community living programs. We have clinician two, which are available in our outpatient and um, our residential sites. We have clinician associates, which are available in our residential sites. 
Um, we have therapists that are available in our outpatient program and in our sites. We have a program manager, a registered nurse. Um, the registered nurse is available in our site one uh, site. Psychiatrist, medication techs, prog program coordinator one and two, intake specialist, medical assistants. Um, we do offer peer support specialist roles. Um, right now we have an ACT peer support specialist position open. Um, we have an ACT substance abuse uh, license position open. Um, we have a clinical coordinator position open and um, a clinical director. Well, everyone is welcome to visit our website to see where they fit in our organization. And again, you're welcome to visit online at lifewell.us. slash careers. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Wendy, for being here today um, and speaking. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, all right. We all right. Have we're going to move over to T-Tech, but I did want to address something in the chat really quick. Um, ageism was brought up a couple times, and so um, that is a legitimate question, and you were asking for uh, an opinion on that, how to get around that. I'm going to drop in the chat in just a few minutes um, a link to a webinar that we did, one of these events we did, and it was specifically on um, pe people that are ha all, a whole bunch of the main issues ageism, racism, gender issues, things like that where people are feeling they're not getting jobs because of those thing, those um, items those, that they're dealing with. So I'm going to drop that in and then you can go watch it. And um, it's a really great talk by Brenda Cunningham. She really addresses it well and also talks about some of the things you can do to try to navigate that. So, all right, I just wanted to mention that before moving on. All right, Erica and Stephanie Thomas are here today from T-Tech. Erica is going to talk Stephanie Thomas is in the chat and she is um, going to be able to respond to some of your questions. Stephanie is the talent acquisition specialist with the team and she's been with them. Uh, she started as a temp in 2008 and she's been with them since. Uh, after she was a temp, she became permanent staff. She just celebrated her two month or two year anniversary, excuse me, this month. And she has a background. Um, as an IT recruiter for a small boutique company and it prepared her in joining a global company to hire on a much larger scale. And so Erica Flanders is going to be speaking today. She started at T-Tech as a customer service rep in 2012 and then moved into recruiting a year later. Um, and um, she was a talent acquisition specialist and now she's been pr promoted to recruiter as of 2017 and promoted again as lead recruiter in 2019. And she says that working for T-Tech has become more than a job. It's blossomed into a career with an amazing company and she has found a family with her team all over the world. So please help me welcome Erica Flanders to our stage. Hello, Erica. Hi guys. Um, first, I wanna just thank everybody for joining. I'm super excited to get to present to everybody on the call today. Um, it's a really awesome opportunity. There's a lot of people on this call, so it's really awesome. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about who T-Tech is and what we do. Um, so T-Tech is a business process outsource company. What that really means is that we take over customer service and sales needs for different clients and we normally do that in a call center environment. Um, right now everybody for the most part is um, training and working from home. Eventually we'll go back to the site when it reopens, but for the, a good majority of all of our positions right now it is going to be training and working from home. And it can either be um, like an inbound customer service role, and we do have some um, sales roles as well, but we won't really cover those today. Um, so who we are as a company, um, here's a, just a quick overview of our values. Lead every day, do the right thing, reach for amazing. Um, really with all of our values, we hold them very dear to our heart, um, all the way from agent level up to you know, our executive directors. You'll see all of us kind of living those values, not only in work, but in our day-to-day -day life as well. So this one position that we are gonna kind of chat with you all um, about in particular, um, it is an inbound customer service role supporting Blue Shield of California. Um, we have a class, well, we have a couple classes scheduled to start, but the most recent one is going to be October 26th. Um, so it's inbound phone calls. Um, they can last anywhere from two to 15 minutes and it does require like multitasking because you'll go through maybe 10 to 12 different systems at a time. Um, offers competitive pay, a monthly performance bonus, um, pretty decent work schedule, 
and um, basically the requirements for the position are you must be 18 years or older and have a high school diploma or equivalent with one year of customer service experience. That customer service experience can be anything, retail, fast food, um, call center if you have it, um, anything that's interfacing with a customer either in face or uh, over the phone, we'd, we'd consider that customer service. Uh, with all of our positions, we do do a seven or a 10 year criminal background check, um, as well as a drug screen, and we do an education and employment verification. And just like every other company in the United States, we do an I-9 um, verification as well. So the work setup. Currently it is um, starting at home, working from home, <laughs> training from home. Um, a little bit of the requirements for that, um, you must have uh, internet at home um, with an internet speed of at least 15 megabytes per second. Um, you must be able to hardwire directly into your modem or router. And if you don't know if you can do that, you just check the little back of your modem and you'll see like a little port that you can plug an ethernet cable into. That router or modem must be within like 10 to 15 feet of your primary working space. And that working space you'll want to have is like a quiet area where you can kind of get some privacy. So what, whoops, it's moved forward too quickly. There we go. Uh, so if you all want to take a quick picture of this, um, this is kind of the next steps. Um, if you have not applied with T-Tech in the past, please visit our jobs website, ttechjobs.com. Um, you can search for the Phoenix site and the inbound customer service representative. Um, at that point, you'll complete the application. It will automatically send you a, a, an assessment. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes. They're gamified. You'll learn a little bit more about T-Tech and then they'll test, test customer service skills and computer skills. Um, once you've passed those assessments, you would move on to the interview portion. Um, that interview would either look like a one-to-one -one interview with a recruiter or like a Zoom session with multiple candidates at the same time. So a little bit, I'm just going to kind of go over a little bit more of the basics. Um, the pay for the position, I didn't see it listed in here, so I'm going to go over that with everybody, um, is $16 an hour for an English permanent role. $17 an hour for a bilingual permanent role. And then we do have a temporary role as well for people that might not live in the Phoenix area. So let's say you're in Tucson or Flagstaff or um, I don't know, Sholo, anywhere within Arizona other than like the Phoenix surrounding area, we do offer that, uh, that temporary role as well. And that pays at $17 an hour. Um, let's see here. So here is our website um, and our office address. So once we do go back to the site, this position is housed in our North Phoenix site um, located off of I-17 and Bell. And if everybody wants to kind of take a picture, if you're interested in any of these positions, here are the little links for those. And I'll kind of hold right there for you all. Okay. So a couple ways to stay in touch with us. Um, you can either go to ttechjobs.com you can actually text TTEC to 97211 and it'll get you in touch with one of our recruiters. Um, my contact information is listed as well as Stephanie's and Stephanie is kind of manning the chat, hopefully being able to answer any questions you guys might have for us. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that there as well for anybody to take a picture of. And that ends my presentation. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. We appreciate your time, Erica, and connecting with uh, folks that are attending today. So round of applause, thank you so much <laughs> for being here. All right, we have one more uh, talk for you guys today. And one of the things that a lot of people deal with while going through career transition is that insurance question. And so we decided to bring in a resource to help um, answer those questions and to give guidance to you guys. And so um, Joe is here with us today and he is super excited to be our trusted healthcare health insurance advisor. And he takes great pride in helping people. Um, it's really his passion. He's been running his own health insurance agency for over two years. Um, and he's been a leader on every team he's been on, whether it's school, sports, and then in his career. 
and he loves helping people become the best version of themselves. So please help us welcome to our partner, uh, Joe, the insurance pro with U.S. Health Advisors. Welcome, Joe. Joe, I think you might be on mute. Let's see. I know I saw him log in. Yeah, he is logged in. He is logged in. Are you there, Joe? Okay, so I'm going to flip to the next screen until he comes on. Um, let's see if I can get the PowerPoint moving. Okay, so, okay, it went through. I don't know. But um, Sheila, will you go back to um, his slide, the one that shows his main information? Okay. So Joe does um, insurance, health, dental, vision. There's his phone number. He um, is, they're a broker of uh, many different insurance options. So what they'll do is take your information and kind of look for the best opportunities for you based on what your needs are. And so he's already helped a ton of our people find the right insurance for them. And so, um, just reach out to him. You can see his email below, Joseph Borsier at ushadvisors.com, or just give him a call directly um, at that phone number. Um, they're an award-winning company. They've won multiple awards. You can go ahead and forward, Sheila. Um, they've won multiple awards. Um, they're licensed in the state of Arizona, as well as many other states. And so if you are not in Arizona, but are interested in getting some insurance information, reach out to Joe and he would be happy to help you. So go ahead and go to his last slide. And is that his last one? Okay, so um, Sheila's gonna drop in their information, in his information in the chat so that you can reach out to him directly today. So sorry he couldn't be on, he must be having some tech issues on the back end. All right, I'm gonna go through a couple more things as we close out today. So uh, what's gonna happen now is you all are going to get an event evaluation um, survey. It's going to pop up right on your screen and just answer the question and it'll go away. And so once you answer the question, it, it, like the first question is going to be about registration and just answer the question. And once it goes away and then it'll go away, we, we take all of this feedback. Um, we read it all. We go over all of it. If you we can't do comments because um, the system doesn't allow us. So if you have additional comments, if you have anything else you'd like to tell us, just go ahead and shoot us an email to contact at careerconnectors.org and we would love your feedback. Maybe companies you're looking to, you would love for us to feature. Maybe um, ideas on what topics you'd like for us to present. So anything like that, feel free to email us and we would be happy to help to um, include that in our feedback. Uh, all right. So, so here are the partners that we have. We have uh, many partners that help us make this happen around. Well, now we're all over the United States. People are attending from everywhere, but uh, many of these partners are hiring. Many of them are resources. And so I just want to say thank you to all of our partners for what you are doing to help us continue this program. Now, something Kevin had mentioned was Best Companies AZ. They are also a partner with us. And so they have resources um, that they did specifically for COVID. So bestcompaniesaz.com backslash resources. And so if you wanna go visit that website, they have 65 companies that are currently hiring. And also they have a partnership with, um, they, they put together this website based on some feedback from Arizona at Work. And within that website, they also have embedded a lot of the Arizona at Work jobs. So there's actually way more than 65 companies that are hiring, but they have the, 65 companies at the top and you can click on their logo and see all the different events or all different companies that are hiring and the types of jobs. All right, another thing Kevin mentioned was the DISC assessment. And we, I saw the chat talking about predictive index and MBTI and strengths and other things as well. So DISC, we are able to get for you at no cost through a partnership with Top Talent Consulting. And so you can go onto that and learn a little bit about your work behavior, uh, your communication style, and Sheila's dropping that URL in the chat as well. And then we also blog this event. So we have a blogger on today that's capturing the content from Kevin and all of our hiring companies, and that will be posted in the next couple days. We do not um, send out the PowerPoint for some um, intellectual property security reasons. And so 
but we will have this whole event posted on our website later. You can also now um, look at the professional portraits. If you do get your picture taken with Gordon, um, he will either send them to you or we'll have them posted on this website after you are done. And then we are on social media all over the place. And so our LinkedIn group is really active. And so if you're not in our LinkedIn group, I encourage you to go ahead and join that as well. All right, so our upcoming events, we have Travis Harding coming. He is gonna talk about how to effectively lead during a crisis. And so um, regardless of where you're leading, um, whether it be a new career that you're gonna take off on, that you're gonna do, a business, a, your family, a job, whatever it is, he's gonna uh, address how to lead right now. We have community, community medical services, uh, Roche, North America, and Wealthwave as our hiring companies today uh, on October 21st. And then on Thursday, November 5th, noticed this is not a Wednesday. November 5th is a Thursday. We're moving the date one day because the Wednesday is the day after the election. And we just decided we'd all be tired and so would you and no one's gonna wanna do anything on that Wednesday morning. <laughs> so we moved our event to Thursday morning. Um, and we had Justin Jones right at the beginning of the COVID pandemic come in and do a talk called Get the Job with the skills you learned in kindergarten. And it was a hit. And so Justin is coming back. We're so excited to have him. And he will be doing a, a version of that presentation again, updated for um, what's going on in the market today. And then right now we have Isola as our hiring company. Now, an exciting event we have coming up is Wednesday, November 18th. So this event is a diversity event. And it actually says Vet Talks. It's not Vet Talks, it's a diversity talks. And what this is about is um, companies that have a real passion and care about diversity initiatives in their company. They're going to do a panel. Um, we're moderating a panel of eight companies in two separate panels, and we're gonna talk all things diversity. So um, what are your diversity initiatives? Do you do diversity hiring? So um, what does that look like right now? Uh, so, and how do you support candidates? And then we're going to have another hour of time where 12 other companies pop in uh, up to 20. There might be more than that, but um, up to 20 companies pop in and give a five minute overview of the jobs, their, their company, their company, their culture and the jobs they have available and how to apply. And so we're going to have um, 20 or more companies on this call um, at one time. And you're going to be able to um, engage with them as well through the chat as well. We encourage you to join that. Um, everybody is welcome to join that call. And so diversityaz.org is the website for that to happen. All right. So really cool thing is happening here on Friday. So we um, at 10 a.m. on Friday, it will be on our Facebook feed. And uh, so you'll need to go out to Facebook, but we have what's called a forbearance panel. And so a lot of people right now are dealing with um, rental issues, mortgage issues, paying rent and mortgage. And there are a lot of programs out there right now, at least through the end of the year, but even still there are options. And so we've asked this panel of experts, Lydia, Matt, Sarah, and Adam, and um, we have an attorney on here, a real estate agent, a mortgage broker, and a title agent to come in. And I was, I wanted, I'm doing an interview with them again, Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. And it's going to be live on Facebook. If for some reason Facebook chooses to not work with us that day, sometimes um, it doesn't, we will have it posted immediately after the interview on our website. So, um, but come in, get some information. If you have any questions about rental assistance, mortgage assistance, that kind of stuff, uh, this is a great event for you to attend. All right, so if you are not signed up for our weekly email, you can do that at careerconnectors.org. If you were, uh, if you're on this call today and you registered for the event, then you will automatically be on our email list. You will start to get emails on Monday mornings and that tells you what events are coming up for the week. Also on our homepage, you can see there are three buckets. Um, we have a career chat with me and that is, I do usually do videos once or twice a week. Those are unemployment updates, job search tips, those kind of things. And then we do the CC community update and that's where the forbearance panel will be posted um, as well as a lot of other resources and content that is posted there. 
And then the webinars is this event that we're hosting today. And so everything um, from, I think it was, uh, we started this end of March, beginning of April, um, since the pandemic has hit, that when we went from in-person to virtual, all of those events all the way back are posted there. And that was what we, I dropped that URL earlier, that has all of our events posted there. You are welcome to go back and watch any of them you would like. All right, thank you so much to our um, uh, volunteers that are online today. Tina and Gary, thank you so much. Um, we're also working with a ton of coaches. Uh, Sheila had mentioned earlier about scheduling coaching calls so you guys can get additional support. So look for that in your email. And that is with um, Resume Writers Council of Arizona with career coaches, LinkedIn coaches. And so you'll see more coming on that. All right, if you feel so inclined, we would love any kind of support either now or when you land that um, could help us. We just like many organizations have been hit hard by COVID. And so um, it costs us $42 per person to run this program. And so if you ever feel so inclined to give um, either again now or when you land, we would really, really greatly appreciate that. And you can always do that at, um, on our website, there is a donate button specifically for um, Career Connectors. All right, let me see if I grabbed everything I wanted to say to you guys. Um, all right, I think I got everything. Um, I just wanna say, I'm glad you all are here. Thank you so much to our presenters and our speakers today. And we are praying for all of you that you do land into the career of your dreams. Thank you for being here today.